And so this episode is looking at uh, running the first part of the uh, uh, tutorial, which was uh, shown here. I'll put this link in the description where all we're doing is to move a rectangle from one side of the screen to the other. So I'll just run that so you can see what it's doing. So you can see we've got this uh, rectangle sitting at the bottom. And if I press the left or right uh, arrow keys, it moves from side to side. I can also replicate that using the A and D. That's all it does, nothing very much. As you can see, we've got uh, the uh, Pi game coming up in the console behind us. So if I press escape, that quits. And we'll now start looking at the code. Now, on the original um, tutorial that you see on the website behind me, um, it was all done in one single file. So I've split it into three. We've got a player, a shared file, and the, ba the main sort of file here. Uh, the reason for doing that is that firstly, working with multiple files is, is much better in the long run, especially on a large project. And also, it, I'm trying to match what we do in all three languages. And with C Sharp, you are always working or nearly always working with multiple files. So I've kept that the same way. Now, the other major change is that the player in the tutorial was done as a separate uh, class, a full Python class, but I've done it as a, a code module. So if I click on player, so you can see we've got no mention of the word class in any of the code here. This is just a simple code module. Uh, so we've got um, the imports that we need, the, the shared folder, which is here, and the, the Pi game itself. And then we've just got um, some definitions. So uh, the reason for doing this is that in C Sharp Monogame, this would be a static class because you've only got one player. We don't need to make um, instances of multiple players. N uh, we, we only need one. So it's it's kind of sensible to, to have just a, a static class, but because Python doesn't kind of deal with them, this is kind of a bit of a cop out and a bit of a workaround. So um, we've just got uh, three definitions, one to calculate the update of uh, moving the rectangle from side to side, one that's got some um, functions to start it all off with, and uh, another one to draw. So the way this works is if we go back to the main um, file, again, it is all divided up into separate uh, functions. Starting, so the only piece of code that actually runs is this down at the bottom here, which is main. Um, now I do all my Python work using something similar. I have a main function and then I call it at the bottom. Again, it's because I'm a C-sharp programmer that I'm used to this. This is how things work. I don't see any reason why it shouldn't be exactly the same in Python. So we have a main function here, which does everything. Now, first thing it does is to um, start by setting the uh, width and height of the window. And you'll notice I've got it is shared dot width height, and you'll see the shared comes up quite a lot. Now, the reason for this is Python has this horrible, horrible, horrible global keyword where something that you define up here, such as these, you would have thought you could read and write to that variable in a function, and you can't. You can read from it, but if you try writing to it, you have to put the word global in it, and it really annoys me. So this is something to try and get round that. So if we go to the shared uh, folder, and I'll show you what's in there. So what we've got, we've just imported Pygame. It's basically just some variables. Uh, there's no, uh, at the moment, there's no um, methods in here. So I've put in some constants. That's the width and height of the window, frames per second, some various colors. They're all in here. Um, I've also put in some uh, objects. That looks a bit untidy. Let me just put that straight. Um, just to get things going. So we will be using all these in, in due course. Uh, but because that's in the shared folder, as long as you import that shared folder into your uh, project, you can use all those variables in it. So what we're doing here is we're setting the width and height 
to the this amount uh, and overwriting whatever happened to be in here, which I put in 800 by 600 as the kind of default size. But we're now going to change that by uh, overwriting it on the right one here to 480 by 600. Uh, we're also setting up the window title. So that's uh, when you run main, that's all done first. Um, then we're calling the, the load routine. Now the load function is here and it's meant to be the same as love2d's um, love.load function and monogame's load content function. So this is the kind of Python equivalent of those two. So this is where you set everything up. Now you can see here, I've got that horrible global thing in here because I've declared the player here as an import, um, but I need to set it up. So I've had to put this global word in here in order to, to set it up. So we're initializing the player down here. So we'll go through that in a moment. So the first thing we're doing is to um, get the current working directory for uh, files so that we can import any um, assets. At the moment, we've not got any. We've just got these three files. But later on, when we start importing graphics, we'll need to know where to import them for. Uh, this just simply centers it in the screen. And then Pygame is something you just have to call to get Pygame running. Um, the reason for doing a try accept with the mixer, the, the, which is the audio, if you are running this at a school and there are no headphones or speakers plugged in, uh, it very often uh, errors because the, um, the, the the sound card is not initialized and this will come up with an error. So by doing it like this, you can then um, switch off any references to, to audio in Python by um, setting this shared audio present to false so that you can check that every time you want to play a sound. So if you haven't got a sound card, haven't got your headphones plugged in or whatever, it won't error. Uh, so we're, we're setting up the, the Pygame itself in this load function. And the only kind of non-Pygame, which is all Pygame based stuff with the speed and the clock and all the rest of it, uh, is to actually initialize the player. So we can see we're passing it. Uh, 40, 50, 500 and green. So let's go back to the player and see what that does with it. So we're using this init function here, width, height, speed and color. And so we're, we're setting up a, a rectangle, which is a Pygame object. So a Pygame rectangle, we set the X, Y, width and height of that rectangle. Uh, we're also setting the center of the rectangle and the bottom of the rectangle so that we know where everything is. And we're setting up the speed depending on what we passed it and the color. So this, this is kind of just initializing those variables. Um, the update function, if I just go back here, is this runs now 60 times a second. The update and draw run 60 times a second. And uh, the update will is where you kind of calculate where are you going to put any game assets, where are you going to put your your rectangle, uh, any other objects that are flying around the screen. So that's where you work out where they are. And then the draw function actually displays them on the screen. Um, so if we go to the update one, so the, every 60, 60 times a second, this is going to run. And so it's going to check, first of all, whether we have selected to quit by closing the window or pressing the uh, escape key. And if not, then we're going to uh, call this player update and we're sending it the, the key state and delta time. Now the key state is um, got from this function called process events. So let me just show you what process events does. So it gets the keyboard input and checks if the user has closed the, you know, click the cross button on the window to shut it off. So it's going through the um, events list here and seeing whether um, the uh, the red cross has been clicked. Uh, and it's also checking the keys to see what has been um, pressed. And then it's returning the keyboard state, the key down, and whether or not quit has been chosen. So we're sending these three pieces of information back to our update function. 
So in uh, update, we're now going to pass to the player the keyboard state and delta time. So the player receives that here. It gets the keyboard state and the delta time. And it checks to see from the key state which key has been pressed. And if it's the left or the A key, then it's going to move in the left direction. And if it's the right or D key, it's going to move in the right direction. Um, I've had to use round here because uh, speed times delta time gives you a fraction and yet the rectangle X has to be an uh, integer. So that just makes sure that there aren't any uh, errors. So we're moving the um, rectangle from one side or the other and then we're checking whether it's completely hit up against the width of the screen and if so we set it um, uh, to that width and um, or, or whether it's hitting the left side of the screen and then making sure that it stays there so it doesn't sort of disappear off the off the screen and then finally we're drawing it using the built-in pygame.draw.rect which uh, you have to supply the the object you're drawing onto which is in our case the screen the color and the rectangle that you're using as your reference point so that's how that works um, if we just play that again, wrong one, I want to run it from, let's cancel that from there, and then we'll hit that. So again, just pressing the left and right key and it stops at each uh, edge without going any further. So a, a nice, simple, straightforward uh, routine there. Just see if there's anything else that we need to know. Okay, so on the main one here, uh, we've got this while loop here. Um, so we're setting up the the game state as uh, game states play. So what does that mean? Well, if we go to the shared one, uh, we've got a dictionary here where menu is zero, play is one, and quit is two. So we're setting it to a value of one in our main uh, menu. And here, and uh, then we're checking while that game state is uh, less than quit and quit of course is two so while the value returned is less than two we're going to update and draw so you can see that this here is our game loop so um, we, we run the update function and then we run the draw function here and the game state will only change if one of these, either the draw or more likely the update function, changes from uh, play to quit. So if we choose to quit by pressing the escape key or by uh, closing the button, the game state is set to quit and the loop then breaks. So it's a very simple game loop. Now this is not required in Love 2D or Mono Game, the, the loop is built in. But here we have to specifically call it. And I think this was probably a relatively simple way of doing it. You just set up a some kind of game state. And then um, uh, every time you update and draw, you you see whether that game state has changed. And as long as it hasn't, you just keep going down, round and round in circles. So that's about it for the uh, Python version of moving your rectangle just using uh, key presses. OK, I think that will do for Python and uh, we'll uh, look into uh, the other two on separate videos.